Welcome back to the program. You are watching Newsnight, the home edition. Before we get to our big interview, let me read a tweet here from Kara Wainaina asking, is Wahiga reading the news today from the lounge? His lounge. That's a very fresh concept. Thank you, Kara Wainaina. We were told to work from home if you can. And that's what we're trying to do here at uh, Citizen TV. So this is Newsnight, the home edition. And of course, our big discussion tonight right here on Newsnight is on a formula. One that the Senate can't quite seem to agree on, the third basis for revenue allocation. It was the subject of a heated debate in the Senate for the better part of the day. In fact, at some point, the Senate was discussing an amendment proposed by Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja, seeking to use the current allocation to counties as a starting point for future revenue sharing. Let me read what Kenyans are saying online at this time on the same. Efantas Mutiga saying from Embu, good evening to you all. I support the old formula for revenue allocation. The new formula is marginalized the marginalized counties, hence impeding devolution. Okay, that's a fantas from Embu Kipleting Manuela. I urge our Senate to continue with the old formula for revenue allocation until a time when they will mutually agree to resolve the current stalemate. Well, what do senators have to say on this matter? I have one on the line, the senator for Nanrock County, Ledama Olekina, and a bit later on in the program will be joined by the majority whip, Irungu Kangata. But Senator Ledama, let me start with you. Get your thoughts on this. By this time, many Kenyans expected that Senate would have found some sort of consensus on how money will be distributed amongst the counties. That still not happening. Why do you think uh, Senator got to this? Well, Higa, this is not a very easy matter to be able to just dispense it without the senators really understanding what is installed for them. Uh, there's a lot of misconception out there, which a lot of people believe that there's a CRA formula on the table, there's another formula on the table. That is not, it's not as easy as that. First of all, let me clear that. There was no CRA formula on the table. The committee received the CRA formula, they amended it and they created their mm -hmm. own um, different parameters which is what brought the huge contentions. And today we voted for one, which is the amendment by a, uh, Senator Kangata, who is a majority whip. And essentially what that was saying is mm -hmm. that they suspend the implementation of uh, the committee proposals, which in itself were very contentious because, you know, CRA had some reason in coming up with different weights but particularly when you look at the issue of um, health, they, they they relied on international treaties that are signed. You know, when you look at the issue of agriculture, they also relied on international treaties, and particular and also the issue of land. So when you cap land at five percent, you really disadvantage mm -hmm. a lot of counties which have been marginalised for many years. So today, what we did in the Senate was that uh, the Honourable Senator Kangata brought in an amendment whereby he was saying, let us vote the committee way, but, pro but uh, suspend it from operation for two or three years. But that is not solving a problem. That is being indecisive. And when we become indecisive, that problem will come back again. So the senators, and I'm very happy, and I want to thank um, uh, the distinguished senators for having stood with Kenya. In fact, if you can see my tie today, I'm wearing a Kenyan tie because I wanted to stand with my brothers from Wajir who are losing a lot of money. I wanted to stand with mm -hmm. my brothers from Mandela and also for Naro County, which was losing about 853 million shillings. So really, the problem was this. And, and I'm glad that you read the tweets from the Kenyans so that I can be able to demystify it further. If we run the second generation formula, you know, and maybe maintain the status quo throughout, counties like Naro will continue being disadvantaged. And these are the nitty-gritty that people need to understand because uh, a county like Naro, even if you run the second-generation formula, will lose about $953 million. So what the senators uh, agreed on is to be able now to move, uh, to, uh, to vote for uh, a motion which was proposed by Senator Sakaja, myself, Senator Mutula Kilonzo, that will put figures, actual okay. figures. And I want to tell you the figures so that it is very important for Kenyans to know. It is not about the formula. It is about the base having figures so that we don't want to see counties losing money. So the reason why we voted against the Kangata formula is because it would have, it would have ex suspended the problem for another two years. But then also one other hidden factor in it was that the second generation formula was going to be run and counties were going to lose money. So the reason why we preferred 
the Sakaja proposal is because a county like the Rakanidi will continue getting at, mi- at minimum three, $3.9 billion. A county like Narok will continue getting a minimum of $8.039 billion. A county like Kwale will continue uh, you know, getting about $7.7 billion. But if we had voted for uh, even the CRA formula, uh, assuming that the CRA formula was on the table, then a county like um, Kwale would have lost over a billion shilling. So we really don't want to create these disparities. What we wanted is to have one Kenya where we all support one another. We become our brother's keepers. Okay, uh, Senator, thank you so much for putting all that uh, into perspective. And I'll come back to you a bit later on uh, just to, to be able to dig a bit deeper. But let me also bring in the majority whip of Senate, who is also the um, Muranga Senator, Honorable Rungu Kangata, uh, on the line as well. Honorable Kangata, we saw a very abrupt, dramatic adjournment at the end of uh, you know that very lengthy Senate session that has been on since about 3 p.m., Was it really about complying with COVID-19 or was there some mischief, an attempt to stall the Sakaja amendments, which uh, Senator Ledama was talking about just now? Yeah, uh, you can hear me. Yes, I can. Go ahead, Senator. Yeah, I heard your question. You seem to ask about uh, what was the reason for the adjournment. Yeah, of course, you know, the president gave direction. He said that uh, everyone must be at home by 9 p.m., notwithstanding you are a muheshimiwa. So it goes without saying we had to adjourn by 9 p.m. And uh, for me, that was a good decision that was made by the deputy speaker. Again, my motion was given three hours, my amendment motion. So it goes without saying the amendment by Sakaja should also get uh, three hours, so that it is fair. And on that account, that adjournment was based on solid reasons. Okay, okay. Uh, Senator, I didn't quite catch the last part of uh, what you said. Uh, but nevertheless, yes, I can imagine that for you it's been a bit of a disappointing day. Uh, and, and taking it back to some of the comments you made over the weekend where, in your view, today was do or die. Many asking, is Senate just postponing the inevitable? Uh, for example, this is about the sixth time that Senate is failing to agree on the formula. How many more attempts does Senate really require to find a way forward to ensure that the counties get funded? Pardon, repeat your question, please. Yes, I was saying, how many more times, this is the sixth time that Senate has failed to find a way forward on this matter. How many more attempts, how many more times will Senate have to meet to really get a way forward on this issue of uh, the division and uh, allocation of revenue? Uh, from where I sit, we shall continue talking until we get the, the best case scenario. Today, we were ready to finish the discussion. We are ready not for uh, the matter took a very long time to be discussed and debated. And therefore, maybe next time we need to reduce the number of uh, minutes we give each senator to render a submission. We may need also to reduce the number of speakers so that we are able to dispense with the business. And maybe you can consider having the matter listed during a morning session as opposed to in the afternoon. Maybe if the discussion was started at about 10 p.m., 10 a.m., we could have discussed and even gone up to 6 p.m. and finalized the issue. I guess uh, senators have a lot of passion for the matter. And therefore, maybe next time we shall consider scheduling the business at about uh, 10 a.m. in the morning so that we finalize uh, with the discussion. Otherwise, I agree with you. Uh, County Allocation Revenue Act uh, is late. And therefore, as a Senate, we need to hasten and discuss this matter once and for all. Uh, Maybe if you can allow me to comment on what happened today. From where I sit, uh, we now know those who don't support one man, one shilling, one vote. Uh, very soon, we intend to uh, to now take back the vote again. But we have seen those counties and senators who don't support the idea of one man, 
or one vote uh, the idea and um, but from where i sit we were more surprised when we saw senators from certain counties which are uh, i would call them the so called gaining counties voting against their own interests. okay I was very surprised uh, because I thought you are first and foremost a senator from a certain county. You go there to push to ensure the interests of your counties are uh, fulfilled. Then why would you go and vote against your very own interest? I would urge uh, citizens who come from certain counties where senators voted against the interests of their people to take note and uh, maybe to consider taking remedial action. Uh, calmness uh, uh, when they are going to renew their mandate. Uh, but also uh, there are some uh, senators who are in position of uh, leadership who decided on their own motion to go against uh, the official position of, uh, of the government and I think also we expect uh, mm -hmm. some uh, remedial action to be taken against those uh, senators because once you vote against the government position uh, and you occupy a position that you have been given by the government, you must expect some sanctions. So I have no doubt okay. that uh, Let me allow very soon we shall be cracking the whip of the party against those who went against official government uh, business mm -hmm. uh, that was before the House today. Well, here you go. Okay. Uh, Senator Kangato, of course, some interesting points that you've raised. Let me allow... Uh, Senator Ledama, to respond, go ahead. Sorry. Wahika, it's absolutely ludicrous. And I think we have come of age as a nation that we must respect the separation of powers. The judiciary has its role. The legislative arm of government has its role. And the executive arm have, have, have its role. We are all in support of the president agenda of one Kenya. We will not be supporting an agenda where we are dividing Kenya. And I'm actually saddened to hear the majority whip now trying to intimidate people who stood and who defended their mandate as per Article 96 of the Constitution. Article 96 of the Constitution does not say, you, Senator Ledam Walekina, you, you, you only represent the interests of the people of Narok. I am a senator in the, Republic, in the Parliament of the Republic of Kenya. And I have to do what it takes to be able to unite this country. So I think... Let us really focus on, on, on more progressive matters than intimidation. It is wrong for us to hear Senator Kangata talking about the issue of one man, one shilling vote. Yet, that motion was not even in the, on the order paper. If there was a, a motion on the order paper that says one shilling, one man vote, even our own submission would have been on that. The only issue that we are trying to drive to the Kenyans for them to understand is that as the Senate, we must become our brother's keepers. It is a bit ludicrous for me to lose money and another county to gain. If we are talking like, uh, uh, you know, in a way that at least we guarantee that county services are not disrupted, then I can be able to entertain certain things. I'm sure where President Uhuru Kenyatta sits, he, he will not want to see a Kenyan divided where the people of Narok or the people of uh, Wajir lose two billion. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. So I think in a way, this even postponing, let me put it this way, even postponing today, it was just to give the whip time for him to intimidate people. And it is wrong. Senators should not be intimidated. You know, you cannot be controlled from outside parliament. The truth of the matter is that we stood for Kenya. We want one Kenya which is united. Counties have already prepared their budgets. You don't want to disrupt Narrow County by taking away 853 million from them. You don't want to, to disrupt Namira County by taking over 600 million from them. So I think the honest opinion, the honest thing we should have here is this. Let us not try even to blame the president. I know where the president sits. He supports one, one Kenya. And he will not entertain mm -hmm. any nonsense or people saying that we are now going to de whip certain members because they voted against the government position. There comes a time when the interest of the nation supersede the interest of a political affiliation. And this was the time when the people of Narok spoke highly and they defended the people of Mandera and Wajir. 
and the people of Makweni. I am forever indebted for the people of Nairobi County, the delegation of Nairobi County, for having forgone the gains that they were getting from a skewed formula for them to defend counties which were losing money. And in fact, let us go back to even the Constitution. The Constitution does not envision a situation where we are talking of a formula. It is a basis of dividing that revenue. So let us be honest. I, I would debate Kangata mm -hmm. anytime, Senator Kangata anytime, when he's talking on the issue of content, but not the issue of intimidation. I think we need to grow. We have okay. come up so with it, age as a nation, mm -hmm. and we need to find a solution to helping this country, not a solution to in intimidate other members. It's Senator, just, Senator it's let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. Because in a nutshell... It sounds like what you are saying is that whatever happened in Senate today has heated. S Senator, let me have my voice in there. Senator, hang on. Hang on. So what, what you are saying today is that what Senate did, despite the fact that the impasse is still there, the kind of debate that we saw, uh, the kind of decisions that were made, you know, even, even in terms of voting, was for the greater good of the nation. It sounds like that's what Absolutely. you are saying in a nutshell. Absolutely, Wahiga. Let me tell you, Wahiga. If we did not have a vote. And please, with all due respect, Senator Kangata, do not lie to Kenyans that there was a motion which was drafted that says one man, one vote. In fact, if there was that motion, Nairobi County would have gained more. There was none that that motion. Neither did we have the CRA formula on the table. The motion which was there was a motion that was amended by the committee. And when you amend it, you have to think of the consequences. So really, I think, let us be mature, you know, in politics in Kenya. Let us defend the Kenyans. Let us hold this country together. President Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta and His Excellency Raila Molo Odinga both support one united Kenya. In fact, when you look at the disparity in this nation, it is what has been skewed since uh, the independence of this country. We are going back into the issue of session, uh, sessional paper number 10, where development Development was based on the more productive areas. Look at what develop, the devolution has done for this country. Okay. Devolution has opened up this country. The people of Mandera can now say we are Kenyans. We don't want a situation of intimidation. Or now we are going to say, fine, let us split this country into two. Let us move. For those who feel like they are discriminated and marginalized, you know, let us go our way. And those one who feel like they can continue living in a certain way, let them go their way. But we are not there yet. We want to okay. fight. Okay, Senator, I think you've made your point. Can I can I speak? Yeah? And I believe it, it, yes, my it brother, doesn't have think, to quite uh, go the way uh, you are stating. Let me you allow Senator me Kangata, majority whip, to, to have a voice issues, in on this. Please. And Senator Kangata, before I, I allow you to respond, uh, Fred Obati Machoka is very concerned about a statement you've made. He is concerned that you are threatening fellow senators for executing their democratic mandate. Let me give you a chance to respond to that. Uh, no, uh, first I will respond to some of the misrepresentation that I've had him state. It is not true that uh, what the government is pushing in Senate, they will be losing counties. That is not true. And Senator Orenko expressed that very well on the floor of the House. Uh, in fact, my amendment was as a result of intense negotiations with uh, various stakeholders from northern Kenya, coastal region. The idea was, okay, we implement this formula that is capturing the idea of one man, one vote, one shilling, but we give it two years suspension so that we allow counties to adjust. Uh, the first time, the original time was, we bring the formula, it starts to apply immediately. Then the senators from that, those some regions said, no, we are going to lose money. Uh, then we, we gave them one year. Then they said, no, one year is not enough, give us two years. So my amendment was just to concede to the demands and requests that have been made by certain senators and also governors and other stakeholders from certain regions. If we, we carried the day, it meant no county would have lost money this year or next year 2021 or 2022. So those people saying that uh, 
our idea, which is being pushed by the government, would have led to loss of county revenue and disruption of county uh, function is not true. It's a lie. It is being pendled by my colleagues. There is also the, the, the issue concerning that uh, if you agree to the formula by the committee, you'll be oppressing certain counties. That is, that is not true because how do you calculate money that has been sent to counties to see whether it is fair or unfair? You do what we call, you divide that money per head, what we call per capita share. When you do that, you'll still find places like Wajir, they'll still get about 15,000 per person. Places like Le Kuala, they still get about 16,000 shillings per person. Places like Kiambu, currently they were getting about 3,000 per person. Places like Kakamega, by the a good example is Kakamega County. It is a huge county with a huge population. It gets about an allocation of about 3,000 uh, per person. Uh, this formula was trying now to improve that so that the people of Kakamega can be able to get more roads, more health care. Like, governor for Kakamega has come up with a very good hospital that is going to take care of the people of Vihika, of the people of Kakamega. Uh, but now, he can't be able to fund because the funds that goes to Kakamega is too little compared to other counties. So one chief beneficiary of this idea would have been to assist counties like Kakamega, counties like Kisumu, places like Homa Bay where there are huge population, but the money goes to those regions surely doesn't reflect the principle of one man, one shilling, one vote. And, and, and uh, we have a huge population, let's say, in a place like Nairobi. But we saw senators voting against their own interests. And that is where I was, I, 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 we were a little bit surprised. Because I think, if I'm a senator for... Let me, let, let me, senator, let me ask you like this. Kakamega, I would just... push the interests of the people of Kakamega first. Because they're the one who took you to Senate. Yeah. If I'm from Kisi County... I will okay. push for the interest of the people okay. of Kisi. Honorable, can I just wrap it up because I need to allow Honorable Adama to respond? People of Kisi, they need more hospitals, they need more roads, they need more support. That does not mean the people of, uh, let's say, uh, Isiolo are going to be oppressed. No, they are not going to be oppressed. Isiolo will still be getting uh, per capita allocation of about 8,000 per person. The people of Mombasa will still be getting per capita allocation of about 9,000 per person. But surely we need to assist the people of Kakamega. We need to assist the people of CIA. Eh? Those, people, those, those places okay. have okay. a huge population. And Where the governors from those regions are really suffering. Places like Kisumu, yeah, we need okay. also to... Okay, Honorable Kanata, I think you've given uh, sufficient uh, examples. Please hang uh, on, let me now Honorable Ledama voice in now. Of well, you go ahead, Honorable Ledama. Well, let me Mr. just correct point, eh? one assertion that no, uh, no, let me Honorable Kanata is eh? trying to make. Look here. I was elected the as second generation for the Republic has been with Kenya us for the last the of the counties. eight years, since 2013. Not to Okay, up. hold on, Honorable Kangata. Hang on, hang on. Let Honorable Adama uh, have his word now, please. Wahiga, let me just correct one thing that uh, Go ahead. Uh, Senator Kangata is trying to mislead the public. Article 96 of the Constitution, and I want to welcome Kenyans to Google it if they don't have the Constitution. It said the Senate protects the interests of the counties, not the government position. A government position has got no place when it comes to the issue of the Senate. So we must clarify that. And, um, and like I said, I am really forever indebted for the distinguished senators of the counties that decided that the interest of the counties is more important than the interest of a political affiliation or a position of the government. The only way that President Uhuru Mwegei Kenyatta is going to have a proper legacy is when the whole country is able to achieve, you know, or rather he's able to be able to unite that one country. The argument which Senator Kagata is trying to uh, propose or rather to bring out of one man, one shilling. It's not there. 
it is wrong for you to compare the population of Lamu and the population of Kiambu. The people of Lamu, and let me let me give you the actual figures, and you can Google them. We, the last few years, the per capita was 26,000 because their population is very few. There are very few people. You know, you cannot compare the per capita, the argument of per capita with Narok. Narok, the most we can get per person is about 6,000 shillings because of the population. So until we as a nation can be able to raise more revenue that goes into the counties, we can never be able to entertain the argument of per capita. If we had more money going into counties, if we had more money being devolved into counties, then we can be able to discuss the issue of per capita. So don't lie to Kenyans. One other issue which is very clear, let us be very, very honest. You know, if you now talk about people paying taxes, who actually pays those taxes? Let us ask KRA to give us analysis of which counties pay a lot of money. Now the county collects a lot of revenue. So really, we have to be very, very honest and say, as a Senate of the Republic of Kenya, we cannot go there to only defend the interests of one county. We have to defend the interests of the entire county. And there should never be a okay. position okay. of the government. Let me finish, because Kangata spoke for so long. Now, when you talk about why we voted against his amendment today, some of the things that he's not telling you are this. CRA, in its, in its own uh, whatever ability as a constitutional body that can be able to carry out research, can be able to interact with the Kenya Bureau of Statistics and analyze data, compared what other countries around the world do, which are devolved, are able to do to be able to send money to their counties. The moment you now go against their budget declaration, you know, in terms of the issues of agriculture, or you go against any other international treaty in the issue of health. In fact, you, you take money away from counties. When the committee report, which now Kangata was voting to extend it for two years, had the weight on health for 20%, it was giving all the money to three counties. That is uh, Kakamega, Bungoma, and Kerenyaga. Because that is where they have more households. So let us debate on facts. Let us put the facts on the table. One of the reasons why we voted against the current formula and also against the Kangata uh, amendment is that if we would have agreed to it, yes, it may be uh, the third generation formula would have kicked in after two years, but the net effect would have been Narrow County would have lost 953 million shillings going forward because the the net effect this year we've not been able to re- collect more revenue we get more revenue or based on the fiscal effort that we collect but because of covid so the reason why we preferred the proposal that was brought about by sakaja myself and uh, the honorable mutula is because it was now giving figures so uh, whatever the president is and whatever is advising the president this is what they need to know Okay. As the Senate of the Republic of Kenya, we want Bri- to make Bri- sure that at minimum, Narrow County will continue getting eight billion. Darakanidhi will continue getting three point nine billion. Turkana County will continue getting ten point okay. five three nine billion. If Kangata's formula would have come and said, "These are the figures," Narrow County get eight billion. Maybe we would have thought it differently. But now the problem is this: when you run the second generation formula, you now run it under new parameters of the fiscal effort. You take the figures. You take away 950 okay. million from uh, Merrill. Okay. Senator, I, I have given you sufficient Mbasa. time. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what? You, both of you have been debating since about 3 p.m. today, and I don't want to keep you on too much longer. I want to give you each a parting shot. And many would ask this. Even as Senate goes back and forth on the best formula, counties are not able to properly plan whether it's their 2020, 2021, 2021, you know, the, the, you know, the, the financial year that we do find ourselves in now. Many are anxious that counties will not be able to achieve their plans with a pandemic that has forced counties to even relook at some of their spending priorities. Uh, I want to give you each a chance just to wrap up by giving us your thoughts on how to manage this, bearing in mind uh, citizens in the counties are being denied the money that they need 
to be able to operate. And uh, I'll start with you, Honorable Kangata, uh, even as you give us your final word. Briefly, please. Yeah, uh, my point is that uh, we shall continue discussing and engaging every senator to see whether we can come up with a better way to discuss this issue. Uh, I implore my senator to take into account that uh, we do care for the people of uh, northeastern coast, uh, all those regions, but also they should also care for the people of Kiambu, the people of Nyeri, the people of Kisumu, the people of Nakuru, because we are one Kenya, we are one united Kenya. Uh, the people of Nairobi also. Uh, you know, there's this notion that uh, there's no poverty in Nairobi. Uh, you can see we have huge uh, people living in uh, uh, slums in Nairobi who needs to be supported by devolution. Uh, even in places like Puranga or even Kiambu or even Kakamega or even Kisi or even Machakos. Machakos was one of the counties that was supposed to gain, but now there was now that vote uh, which seems to suggest that uh, uh, the huge population in Machakos should not gain. Uh, or even Kisi, or even uh, a place Kakamega. But there for me, I feel for leadership, for places like Kakamega, because Kakamega is such a huge county that really needs uh, more money, that needs to be more money, uh, because uh, the, the, the governor of uh, Kakamega requires that resource to be able to assist the people of uh, Kakamega, or even Kisi or even Machakos, or even Kajiado also. I would, uh, we, we, yes, even as we think about Isiolo, we think about uh, Marsabit, uh, we think about Tana River, let us also think about the people of Kajiado. Uh, uh, from where I see it also, we must always think okay. about the people of Lamu, uh, because those are some of the counties who, which somehow this uh, formula would have favored. Because people are, I can see some leaders who wanted to frame this issue as if it is only about Kenya, the counties that were being in the so-called Nyeri, Nyandarwa, Moranga, uh, and such. No, 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 no. The, it was the entire Kenya that was, that was supposed to gain. And again, we believe very soon that 5% of national revenue will be devolved. And that will happen in the next one year or two okay. years. And again, equalization bill is about to be enacted into law. Once we devolve more money and then we enact equalization bill, then we will have covered our brothers and sisters from northern Kenya and coastal regions. And, and therefore, that then would have justified us passing this uh, formula today so that those regions, they benefit with equalization money uh, they also benefit by giving them a two-year meritorium. And then places like uh, Muranga, oh, okay. Kiambu, Kakamega, Ma Majority Machakos, it was supposed to be a party uh, short, Lamu, and places like uh, Kisi. Kisi was a major beneficiary. Yeah, okay. they benefit. So the entire Kenya would have benefited if my brothers would have just uh, seen the sense to support what uh, the government was pushing. Okay. Well, uh, Majority Whip, you're very confident in, in what you have to say, but of course those on the other side uh, you know, do not buy into what you're saying, and that's part of what we saw in Senate today. Uh, Honorable Ledama, again, I'll have to ask you to, to limit yourself to a minute or two. And one question to you from one of our viewers is, if the CRA formula was brought to the House, would you have voted for it, even as you wrap this up for us, uh, Honorable Ledama? The Thank you, Wahiga. If the CRA formula would have been brought to the House with its rider, because the CRA formula had a rider, they had said based on the parameters and the weight of the parameters, certain counties would lose, but they were proposing that 15% additional revenue of the money being allocated to counties be set aside to cushion the counties which would lose, I would have actually been able to support because even my first amendment had about 10 percent. You know, it was going, we were going to run the formula based on the CRA parameters on around 90 percent. And then 10 percent of the money would have been used to cushion counties. That would have seen the biggest county losing, only losing 79 million. I would have lost 70, 43 million as a county of Narok. So right now we don't have a CRA formula. But if the CRA comes with its rider, that 15% of money be allocated, then we can amend as a Senate to be able to run the formula at um, 85% and then 15%, create a cushioning index 
that can be able to help, be able to ensure that this country remain united. Now, to my parting shot, I want to be very categorical. I've listened carefully to my brother, the distinguished senator from Moranga, where even in the CRA formula, Moranga was losing. But we found a way or where we cushioned it such that it gains. I've listened to him carefully in his, in his parting shot, and he seems to be targeting the counties that were gained but were magnanimous. And they said we want to be Kenyans and sort of like sending them threats and saying you should have gained, you should have gained. I want to encourage the county governors from those regions. Kakameka, the one that he's mentioned, Kisi that he's mentioned, Machakos that he's mentioned, he's also mentioned Kajiado. I want to tell them that you've got distinguished members of the Senate who care about this nation, who care about one Kenya, and you should always support them. There's no point of me gaining and you lose. Okay. I want to be very clear. I have 20 seconds. Wahiga, I want to be very clear in my point. The only way that this country can be able to avoid this divisiveness is when more money can be devolved into the county government. But because the only amount of money that we can be able to save is 316 billion point five. The only best way we can be able to ensure that there is unity in this country is if the actual allocation from the last financial year continue being allocating until the time when we can raise over 400 million to be able to help this country. So I want to assure Kenyans that as the Senate of the Republic of Kenya, we will not be intimidated. We will stand with Kenya because that is what Article 96 calls for. It does not call for intimidation. It calls for us to support uh, devolution and to stay away from session paper number 10, which is what Kangata, the Honorable Senator Kangata, seems to be taking us to. Kenya is one. We cannot entertain the argument of per capita at this point because we do not devolve more resources. When it comes to the issue of BBI, at that okay. point, we we'll cross that button because I- Article 217.8, let me finish allows the Senate with a two-third majority to be able to amend its resolution. But currently, the only resolution which will be able to unite this country is a Sakaja proposal of Y equal A plus B, where A is the amount of money that the countries are receiving. If we get any more allocation, then B can be used based on uh, the different parameters. I thank you. Okay. Senator Adama, thank you. I think I've given you sufficient time to uh, give your closing argument. Let me read a message here. This is actually uh, a a message to you, Honorable uh, Kangata, from Honorable Ishungwa. Uh, He says you are sitting on a bill that he sponsored that would have guaranteed that at least counties get cash before the stalemate is resolved. It's in the Senate having been finalized by the National Assembly three months ago. uh, And he says that if that bill had passed by now, the counties would have been able to access cash. Something for you to think about uh, even as we wrap up this discussion. And of course, regarding that CRA formula, it would have seen 20% allocation to health, 5% to land, 7% to roads, and agriculture at 12%. Gentlemen, I know this is a discussion that can take us uh, up until midnight, but we're going to have to wrap it up for now. Uh, and thank you so much. That's been Honorable Irungu Kangata, uh, the Majority Whip Senate, and also the uh, Muranga uh, Senator. He's had quite a difficult day, and uh, he says he's got a lot more work to do to try and get consensus on how uh, money will be distributed to the counties. And, of course, we've had Honorable Ledama Olekina very clear uh, on his stand and, of course, siding with uh, that motion brought by Honorable Sakaja on a different formula of how to distribute uh, funds to the counties, uh, you know, and again, the discussion of 2020-2021 or whether to have something that would work in 2022-2023, which Senate uh, did not agree with today. That's why we wrap up this discussion. Thank you so much for all your feedback, everyone who's watched this special edition of Newsnight. This has been the home edition. Expect to see more shows like these in the days to come as we endeavor to uh, adhere to Ministry of Health guidelines and, of course, keep you updated on everything that's happening wherever we are, even at home. You can still expect to enjoy the programming that you have become accustomed to. My name is Wahiga Mwaura. On behalf of a very big team that's made this special broadcast possible, we say thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who's tweeted, uh, sent messages via 22422 on Newsnight. And, of course, uh, our sign language interpreter tonight has been Yula Zale. Even as we wrap up, stay safe wherever you are, whichever part of the country or the world you're watching this program from. And keep it Citizen TV. uh, And have a good night.